right guys, how are you all doing? Um, and here we go. Um, quite a while, I mean it's not very often I get the chance to do a sideshow um, video. Um, my last one was the Red Sonja one. And um, I'm pleased to say I've now got my third Lord of the Rings piece. I know there's quite a few before that that I've missed out on because I wasn't really into um, sideshow and all the collectibles at the time were even aware of it more than likely um, but after the Dark Rider and so on I've still managed now to pick up um, the latest one which just arrived yesterday uh, and that is Saruman that's right um, the dude Christopher Lee himself the icon of the Hammer Horror films playing a big big role as Saruman the wizard that turns evil in Lord of the Rings obviously he was good in The Hobbit um, and here's the premium format version of it. Let's try and go through a few bits with you. Um, try and cover as much as possible. Maybe you've got one arriving very soon. Uh, you're just waiting any day. It might be arriving tomorrow. Maybe it's one that you're thinking about. Um, well, for the value, for the price as well, and uh, what it is, this is excellent. I've uh, been a bit worried with SciShow lately. A lot of crap coming out that PVC Hellraiser. There was um, PVC Superman. There was talk of the Hellraiser being PVC. Thankfully, it wasn't. And then there was um, that really bad big chap uh, legendary bus that had all sorts of problems and bad paint jobs and everything. Not in the case of this one, thankfully. Uh, and um, the whole item itself is polystone underneath uh, all the layers of fabric. Now obviously, like all of the Lord of the Rings pieces, the exception of Sauron, uh, you've got the same base on it. Uh, just the colours slightly alter, same plaque on it. Um, this is piece 100 of 400. I thought they'd done more than 400 uh, limited exclusive versions but apparently not. Uh, so this is number 100 and if you recall in the film um, obviously he lives in Orthanc and you've got the black steps. Now there were only a couple of steps uh, on this item and uh, exactly they are in the film that are sort of this gloss, they look like liquish, uh, black glossy steps, there's a couple of them, he's one foot on one, one on the other, here we go, uh, and the thing that really gets to me that I think is beautiful um, above everything else, and I will go over the clothes in a minute because I think they're fantastic, is um, Christopher Lee's lightness to his face, the detail is fantastic, it's not going to show on camera, I'm sorry it won't show, I'm trying my best to put this in front of the light outside so you can actually see as much detail and show the sort of the shadowy reflections of it but um, as close as I can get you're still not picking it up the colour contours and um, the contortions on his face the wrinkle lines they're not showing up on camera but there is quite a few of them and it's absolutely fantastic it really is done really really well um, a lot of pieces I can pick little faults and I've had a good spin and look at this last night and um, I can't pick one there's actually nothing wrong with this item at all. One bit that could have been done better than another. I can't find one. It, it is that good. And uh, for the value for what you're paying for it, um, commend that one. It's brilliant. You've got no problem with googly eyes, which we seem to get all the time. I don't know how they can keep doing that mistake because it's so obvious. His eyes are brilliantly done. They're enamel finish on paint. Um, obviously, you can see all the lines on his forehead, the frown in between his eyebrows and uh, the sunken cheekbones as well. Brilliant, he's really giving you the evil stare. Um, the clothes is fantastic. Um, the clothes that you see, the clothes that you can't see. Um, now the, the one thing I will do when I do get my collection room sorted out and I put this aside, because this will be going back in a box sadly until about June after today, but I wanted to show you it and I wanted to have another look myself, is I will have to get a little iron out, a little travel iron and iron out some of these creases because um, it sort of spoils the look of it um, that there are creases on the robe here and on here too but um, if we disregard all that for the moment and just think of what it would be when it was done um, the fabric is fantastic it's like when you buy one of these really expensive tablecloths uh, you've got all of these little silvery cotton fabrics on top sewn in to the actual uh, sleeves of him and then on the other side then you've got all of these as well the little labels and these I think they may be little rubbery things I'm not too sure little button down pieces but then you can see the gold lining again the belt the tassel on the belt which goes all the way down 
excellent really really well done goes all the way up to his neck collar and then you've got pieces that you don't see um, that, that obviously he does have in the film I mean you can see his polystone sort of shoes there's one of them there and laces on them too and obviously he's got white trousers hidden all the way underneath that there's his other shoe just at the back as well you're never going to see that because of the the cloth it's really nice quality as well it's nice it feels good it feels like proper stuff not like kitchen mop crap and obviously you got his big staff that he has his powerful one wizard staff which he has all the way until the end of the uh, third film where uh, you see it get destroyed in the extended version uh, that's a nice tall thing he's metal with a bit of plastic at the top but you can't tell that and that goes all the way to the bottom of the step that's a tall piece now this comes with the exclusive this is the exclusive hand and um, recalling the film he uses it like a claw I remember Peter Jackson saying he can do it he twists his fingers so they look like a claw over the palantir now we'll take that off in a minute and um, what I'll do I'll actually show you um, with the actual light on the palantir because out of the two, no one's really going to go for the claw hand. So if we take it off, it just runs off of a couple of AA batteries, which is no problem at all. Um, some of the others are quite hungry on batteries, take a lot more. But um, Christopher Lee, nah, he only takes just a couple because it's only one little light. The little button pushed on the back, and um, I'm afraid you're not going to see it in this light. But maybe some of the other chaps videos will see it properly. If I pull the curtain across, you get a rough idea that it does come on, it does flash and glow and so forth. Um, brilliant, the panels here. Really nice little touch having that light. If I was going to be greedy, I'd say, can't we have a little light on his wand? But his wand never did light up in the movie either. If we go around the back, uh, again, this is where it needs an iron job. But again, you do have more detail on the back bit. I mean, generally you never see the back of models, so it's, um, if, if you're going to miss out on bits and you're not as excited, you know, it's going to be on the back. But they still put detail on the back, his hair coming down as well. And there we go, all the way to the high point, because obviously there are no steps here. And it's got the high base and the back switch too. And there we go. I think I've just about covered it all, haven't I? I think I've just about done it. This is probably one of the shortest sideshow reviews that I've probably gone over, and it's not for the lack of um, detail or quality. The beard, uh, it's done in a couple of tones of paintwork, the dark and the light, and uh, it's well detailed with the beard section too. But it's his face, his face is absolutely excellent. The, um, the false nose Christopher Lee has in the film is picked out really, really nice. It's that long, thin, sort of pointed nose that he's done and even the hands as well match the same quality as the face some um, models you know the, the hands the wrong color to the face so the skin tone doesn't work out correct uh, not in this case uh, exactly the same thing again and also one other thing I didn't point out if you remove the sleeve you've got more beautiful beautiful artwork on the sleeve as well. You see that the sewn fabric, that is sewn into it fabric as well. So again, more hidden treats underneath. It's just layered and layered with all these different quality fabrics of clothes. And uh, even on the ends of the cloak itself, more and more detail. I don't know if that's ironed on. It might be some sort of material that then is ironed onto the actual fabric itself. Either way, it looks really, really good quality on, on that part as well and his hair just going around the side. So there you go guys, there's my um, Sauron, uh, third one. Um, let's just hope they bring out some more Lord of the Rings pieces in the future. I can really do with seeing uh, the Balrog or the Cave Troll or the Watcher that comes out of the, um, the pond. That would be really, really nice, a pond or the lake or whatever. Uh, and any of the other horrible creatures that come out. I know Sideshow Wet had done them all. But um, I'm never as pleased with the paintwork on those and the overall sizes of them are a bit smaller. But um, all the same, this is uh, Sarah Man. I said Sarah before, but Sarah Man. And um, thanks very much for uh, watching, guys. Uh, please leave your comments. Let me know what you think of it. And uh, if it's something that you're going to get in the future. For me, no problems, no issues whatsoever. It's a must buy if you're a Lord of the Rings fan. Definitely. Definitely go for it. Okay, then cheers, guys. Thanks for watching, and uh, I'll catch you all later. Cheers.